I feel like I have to explain myself. That's fucking crazy money. This defines whether this video is going to work or not. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to catch this on my foot. Yeah! Yeah! Good morning, you gorgeous angel of Nazareth. Today is we're going to shoot the dropping the ball from the drone video. We have to because the new piece arrived. So we'll do a quick little recap. If you haven't been here, lucky you. And then the I've got this piece that sits on my drone that's like a, a lever and you have a remote controller and it pulls the lever back and forth. And so pulling it back releases whatever payload you have. So in this case, I have a soccer ball, a football attached that I'm then going to drop and try and control on my foot. That's like basic, basically the video. <laughs> We've tried it two or three days in a row now that hasn't worked we figured out that it was well i'm pretty sure it was just the uh remote that was broken anyway that's new so we're going to do that today but i woke up like this morning i've been up for, it's 20 to 8 so i've been up for about two and a half ish hours or so we've edited the video been to the gym but i can't shake this feeling how do i explain it i it sounds it sounds so silly coming out my mouth i'm ready to be where i want to be like i feel that i've not that i'm owed anything by any stretch but like i've put in so much work i feel like i'm doing things the right way I feel like I've gotten myself to a place that I'm ready for the, <laughs> for the next step. God, what a knob. <laughs> Sounds so dumb. But it's like I'm still finding myself every day thinking about work. Like I'm doing what I love for work, but I'm thinking about work from like, can I make the money I need to? But like also mentally, I feel like all the work I've done is at a place that I should be where I want to be right now. And I mean that purely just from an analyt analytical standpoint and from a, like the type of person I am. What do I mean by the type of person I am? I mean, I'm trying to be the best version of who I am for my son. Dude, that is dumb. Just went through a red light, slow as hell. And like I look at my position and I think I'm very, like I've worked so hard to be in this position. And I'm doing something I love, but there doesn't seem to be that relief yet. I knew, I knew that going into the position that I'm in right now. But I'm, I'm just like, I'm ready for the, the next level. Like, I feel like mentally I've trained myself enough. I, I guess this kind of feeds into it too, because on in Friday's vlog, I mentioned that I wanted to be in a position where I'm thinking more about doing things for my wife or for Rugi. Like, I feel like I do, you know, enough at the moment, but I want to do more. And so... I started yesterday by, so my wife is eight months pregnant. I guess that means we are eight months pregnant. And she, she wants to do a full natural home birth as she wants to do with our last child. Things got in the way. But anyway, for this one, it's all about the uh, getting ready mentally. And so one of the things she said she would like which surprised me because of just the dynamic we have. She'd like positive affirmations. So no, the, the kind of, like, I'll, I'll explain it, how my wife and I talk about it. Excuse me. And I feel like, I gotta be careful here. The way m my wife and I talk to each other has no bearing on anyone else. So if anyone else has an issue with the way my wife and I are talking to each other and we communicate, unless it's her being abusive to me, oh, I don't care about anyone else's opinion on that and no one should have an opinion 
on how my wife and I communicate with each other. So like she's saying she thinks she, that she would like these positive affirmations. And she's like, I know that's like kind of gay to say that. Bearing in mind, we grew up in the, like, we were born in the 90s, early 90s. So that was a normal way for us to explain something that sounds kind of stupid. And that has like nothing to do with actually being gay. That's just like what it was back then. And so, so what I decided to do was every, it's like a kind of half good thing, half, well, you're kind of, you're kind of lazy about it. I created a, a prompt or a script for chat GPT that based on like, it takes into account lots of information about my wife and what she's looking for and the type of person she is, her experiences, where she wants to be and generates a positive affirmation based on all of that information. And then it automatically sends her a text each morning so that when she wakes up, she has one of these positive affirmations. First one went through yesterday and she really liked it. I think the step up for me there is to, instead of sending it to her via text, is for me to handwrite it and like just leave them around the house in places. So what I mean by that is like, I've started I've realized that like that, there's nothing stopping me from starting something small like that that doesn't cost anything for my wife. So those are the types of things that I should focus on at the moment that don't cost lots of money. You imagine someone tries to cancel me for saying, for like us talking about something being kind of gay in our household when actually the whole conversation was about creating positive affirmations for my eight month, a seven month pregnant wife. <laughs> Just kidding, I had to do that, I had to do that. I think, to, I think it's a shame if, if someone's offended by like this section. My only advice to that person would be why the hell would you care what I have to say? You shouldn't. You know, I was thinking between that last bit and now, I think about like my wife and I using the term like, oh, that's gay. Like that's effing gay or something like that. And I think perhaps I should just not include parts of that in here. Uh, this is kind of a uh, longish winded thought is that I truly believe my wife and I should communicate however we want to communicate behind closed doors. Okay. But then I started to think, what if someone is gay and takes offense to even someone behind closed doors using something they are uh, as kind of like a joke. And like I would never want to actively try and hurt someone's feelings. And I, there's, a, there's a part of me that thinks, dude, if you're hurt by that, just deal with it. What the hell? Like it's your own thing. And there's another part of me that's like, I didn't need to say anything to potentially hurt someone's feelings. So I think, you know, you have two sides to this. You have the side of, you should not be hurt by what I, someone completely irrelevant to your life, has to say, right? And then there's the other part of, why would I do something, why would I say something that could, that could potentially hurt someone's feelings? Like, how much do I get from, it, from doing it when the potential offset is hurting someone's feelings. Now I think that that goes two ways again, doesn't it? Because it's like, why are you hurt by what I'm saying? No, that wasn't where I was going with it. I was thinking about what if, so let's say I'm a content creator 
and there are lots of people out there who hate, like, they don't understand the difference between an influencer and a content creator, which is fine, doesn't matter to me. But influencers have a bad rap. They're people who will take a check for anything, they'll lie about whatever it is, and they'll try and sell you something, whether it's good or not, whether they've even tried it or not. Whereas a content creator, I think, is more someone who's making content for the enjoyment of it and isn't there necessarily trying to sell you something. They, they're more like trying to create entertainment. And so for someone to say, oh, any person who makes a video online is just trying to sell you something to make money and they don't really care about you. And I think, does that hurt my feelings? I mean, no, but it's also not great to hear, right? Like, I think I'm very honest. And I think what I do is more about trying to provide entertainment than it is. Like the number of deals I've turned down because I just don't align with what the brand stands for or like what the product is or I don't think it's the right fit. Like just silly money. Well, in the grand scheme of things, not crazy silly money, but just like to me, silly money. And I think, would I prefer someone say that all people who create videos online are bad? Or would I rather them just keep it to themselves? And like, it's fine if they have that conversation with their friends. And I think, well, I, you know, maybe perhaps I'd prefer they just have it with their friends. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter, does it? Like, why should I want to stop someone doing something or saying something they want? Are we going to look back in like 20, 30 years and be like calling someone gay or something gay as like a, oh, dude, that's freaking gay. Oh, dude, that's so gay of you. Something like that. Are we going to look back at that as like the N-word? Is that going to happen? Like I just, I just think of my wife and I making a joke to each other. Like sh I do something stupid, she does something stupid and I do, that was... Dude, you're, that's so gay of you, so, you know, something stupid like that. And the grandkids are like, oh my gosh, you can't say that. Like literally how I was to one of my grandmas when I was younger. Is that where we're going? Is that it? <laughs> In which case, jinkies. All right. So what am I doing right here? Let's you back a bit. Yo, just to be clear, I don't care if you're gay, white, straight, black, Asian, trans, I don't care. Like, do your thing. And if what I've said has offended you, then it depends. If I think it's wrong, then yeah, then I'm sorry. But if I think it's you being sensitive, then um, and I think I have a right to do that because I don't think it's harmful, then um, I won't apologize. And I feel like, I feel like that's fair. Like, I'm not homophobic, right? Like, I just feel like that is a fair way to do things. Well, this one's really slow. <laughs> Maybe it needs more charge. Maybe it needs more charge. <clears throat> I was thinking that there is no reason I can't make, unless, you know, like this video where there's more to plan for it and things go wrong that I can't just fix in a few minutes. I should be making two to three videos a week. But I think what stops me is the is knowing that, that like this pressure to make sure that I maintain a certain level of average views across my social media platforms. And I know I get that that's wrong. Like I'm making content because I enjoy making content. But one of the, like in my position, one of the ways I'm making a large part of my income is from the few brand deals that I have. And if I start making 
At this point, if I start making videos that are just videos that I enjoy, that I haven't put a lot of time to, into, and therefore don't get the views that I'm expecting, then I'm reducing essentially my income is, is actually what it comes down to. Hi, Duda. Because I'm then less valuable as an advertiser to paying people. But I think once we get to, I hate talking like this, that it's all once we get to this place of making more money, then I can do this. But I think the, the, the thing that I'm also missing in here is that like I've gone through multiple of these steps. What's the best way for me to explain it? Um, shall I try and explain it? Let's try. Let me wind this up. Hang on. All right, I really am just waiting for this to charge, for the drone thing to charge, and then we can go. But So I'll explain this in the meantime. I'll do. So... Like, let's say uh, <clears throat> this is this is step one. You start making content. Make content. Uh, and this is your goal up here. You have this long timeline, right? I would say that I'm... Here, uh, sure, I've got two arms, all right. So I'd say I'm here and I, like, I've hit step after step after step after step after step of succeeding things. So like make, the, make content was my first idea I had to start. So this is say, this is first video, right? And then, you know, we go through these different steps, whatever they are, and let's say this step is Quit job. Um, uh, and let's say the step, <laughs> the step before this was um, make enough money. This one was make enough money so that I could quit my job. The next step was actually quit my job. And now we're at where I am. How do I reach my goal, which is not thinking about money, which is doing the things that I want to for my wife and baby, which is going home whenever I want to, which is going on the trips. And I'm not talking about like crazy nice trips. I'm talking about like taking Duda. She's down there. <laughs> taking Duda for, you know, a, a walk through different national parks. Like this is the area like, I, f I feel like I'm ready to take on this area. But I don't really see that happening right now. And I don't know, I don't know what part is missing. So it's like, how... Oh, gosh. How do I take the things that I enjoy doing right now and take them to the next step of where I want to be or expect to be. Now, I really, I feel that my TikToks are at a place that could be very beneficial to brands, but those brands don't seem to understand how they can be beneficial to them. I don't think you, let's work this out right now. <laughs> As I die trying to get back up, let's say um, you're looking at a $10 to $15 RPM, which equals like basically per thousand views. So for every thousand views, I would earn somewhere between 10 or $15. So this is a, let's say this is a brand deal. So my average views are at 1.4 million. Now we'll say uh, 
um, 1, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, divided by 1,000. So 1,400 equals 1,400. So then we would do 1,400 times $10 equals... So what you're saying is, I should, if brands were going to pay fairly, and I purely business perspective, if brands were going to pay fairly, I should be getting around minimum $14,000 a post. And if we do it times 15, then we're looking at $21,000 a post. I don't think you, I don't, I feel like I have to explain myself. That's fucking crazy money. I don't know what I would do with myself if that's what I was getting for brand deals, which is what I, was, from a business perspective, what I should be getting. The, the, the numbers I'm using here, just straight compare that to a company being like, all right, we have a ton of money, let's go run some Google ads or run our own TikTok ads. Like this is what they'd expect to pay. Look, I mean, even if we go at a really low RPM of $5, we're still looking at $7,000 per video. And then on top of this, you start adding in things like uh, usage rights, which is, and let me switch cameras. So then you have things like usage rights, which is essentially where they're paying you to run the video you made as an ad. And so they need permission to do that and they should charge for that because they're essentially saying, like, we want this piece of content to be able to run it and show all these other people. Now those should be like priced independently of, well, somewhat independently of them paying for the post to be made. And typically you charge, I mean, a, a fair rate would be $1,000 per 30 days of usage. And then they can put whatever money behind the ad they want to. And by that, that means they, if they put $1,000 behind the video, like another thousand, then they may reach, I don't know, 100,000 people. If they put 10 grand down, then they're reaching a million people. <laughs> I don't know. And then like link in bio costs, like $1,000 per 72 hours to have that link in the bio. Now, what I, I really do want to be able to be entirely open about like the numbers that I'm receiving for these brand deals. And if, I think the really good part about that would be, it wouldn't necessarily, like I'm not thinking about exposing brands, but by sharing it on here, I want to do that so that you get an understanding of what's going on, like the, the real life of a content creator. But also so these brands can't lowball, you know, like, I wouldn't want brands to come to me saying, like, we see you post this in the videos and those videos get a ton of views, so we're gonna give you at a crazy high rate. And so it makes us look really good. Like, I don't, I don't want that kind of, <laughs> this is all hypothetical. I don't want that kind of treatment, that kind of behavior. Like, that's no different to, in my opinion, Keith Lee going to a restaurant and then seating him immediately when for everyone else there's an hour and a half wait. But I would like for what brands are paying influencers to be a bit more open because, like, let me tell you, the lowballing, I'll, I'll break this down. Chinese companies, Chinese agencies lowball the hell out of you. And it's not a case of, all right, this is what we're thinking. Let's negotiate and we can like budge a couple of thousand or like $500, it's like, this is our rate. Do you want it? No, you don't want it. Don't worry, we've got 4,000 other people that we've contacted. So it really is just take it or leave it. And then I would say more like American and some European companies, they negotiate a bit more. It's like, this is what we're thinking, which is typically a much higher rate because they understand the value um, and are in that market. And then you can negotiate like give or take a couple of thousand or that $500. But I would like to be able to share that information 
and you know get it in the contract that it is shareable information. All right, so I think it's almost done charging. It's still pretty chilly out. Video's done, let's upload that. Oh yeah, my other thought this morning was, let me open up my topics. Um, that's right, when I started this storytelling, I really wanted to be able to take any idea that I have and see if I could turn it into something that would be entertaining for people to watch and obviously enjoy the process of making it. So no matter how stupid the idea, could I make it entertaining? And like one of my videos was, how much chewing gum could I fit in my mouth? Or like recently, the how long does the flavor in a gum last? How long does flavor in a piece of gum last? Like I'm kind of interested to know, can I take that video and make it entertaining for people? And let's see the chewing gum videos. All right, so I did two videos on that recently, like two English gum versus UK gum. So the first one got 600K and the next one got 750K, which I think is mental. And then if we go back a while, I did flavor of chewing gum. And I think that, yeah, 3.2 million views for the flavor of chewing gum. Like how, <laughs> that's mental, isn't it? That's crazy. Okay. What, sh what should I be doing right now? I should be making a, I think two videos that I really, three that I really want to get in on. Three videos, so we've got, um, what's that Ch Big League Chew? All the different flavors of that, Big League Chew. I wanna try all the different flavors and see how long they last, or what's the biggest bubble I can blow with those. Big League Chew, and then we have Mini Skittles fit in mouth. And I also saw they have mini, mini shittles I've got hit written here. <laughs> mini M&Ms, same video. And then hand in lotion for 24 hours. All right, so how about today we shoot uh, we shoot the this dropping the ball from the drone video and then we'll try and edit it as much as we can and I will like somewhat plan out the hand in lotion for 24 hours so I can start that today and have it finished like before I go to bed tomorrow. No. Yes, yes, yeah. And then do I go and buy the Big League Chew and Mini Skittles? Like I at least buy the Mini Skittles, I think. Yeah. All right, let me clean up a few things here and then we'll head back out to get the drone video shot. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to catch this on my foot. <laughs> we'll see. I thought I'd show you my process this time of trying to get this to work or not. And I was just doing a bunch of Amazon returns and I've come up with what I think is a genius, it might be absolute trash, but a genius approach for Amazon to stop losing money on things. Like the number of, like I see people all the time running Amazon returns and you can't tell me that a lot of those people aren't getting the item, using it for whatever, and then just returning it. So they're basically renting it. Now, what if... Oh gosh. So Amazon do have this t 
type of area of their business which is called Amazon Warehouse, which is essentially items that have been used by a customer that they then sell on for a little bit cheaper. What if you open up a whole new department that's just renting? So now, I think the marketing would have to be clever to get people to change their mindset from, oh, I can buy this and then return it at no fee. But if you could get people to go onto the idea that they can rent an item for like a third of the cost, I reckon that would work. I reckon that would be big. So when Amazon do this, just remember, you heard it here from this dinky YouTuber. Come on, boy, we can make this happen. This really is it. This is the moment of truth. This defines whether this video is going to work or not. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Okay, not. Not a brilliant start, just hold on. The check is complete, I've done the check. Oh, that's the police, they know I'm here. That pesky police eye. Okay. Let's see. All right, will it drop the ball? That's my question. See anything? Yes! Try again. Come on. Please. Please be what I think I need you to be. Come on. Go on, I shouldn't hold it there, should I? Come on, you beauty. All right, ready? I still can't bloody see. Yes! Dude, this is so good. This is really good news. Okay. Let's start shooting. This will be the third time that I've taken everything over to this area of the field. So, third time's the charm. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm really proud of this setup down here. Although I have had a lot of practice in trying to do it. All right, so first shot, I'm thinking I get another shot of me dropping the ball from the drone. And I think this one is going to be like really just an actual demonstration. So I'll shoot it from this angle of, of this camera. And it's going to be me up at the camera with the button and then watching the ball drop from behind. So I'm going to get the angle from here with the haystacks in the background. I'm still a big fan of this haystack thing. Um, I also find that when I'm shooting a video like this outside, I really do want to shoot it on, um, what am I trying to call it, on like manual mode so that I have control. Okay, oh, I guess I'll take that with me. Uh, so I have control over the, the camera, the image quality. Because in a shot like this, um, if you have it on auto, auto settings, you could very easily find that the sky is exposed properly, but you're like super dark and you can't really see it. Which, you know, you could say adds to the authenticity of it. But at the same time, like if I can control the quality of the video without that much extra work, why wouldn't I? I 
I don't think you realize how glad I am that this is working now. Like for how much time I've put into this. Like why is there styrofoam everywhere? This place is a mess. Who's keeping my work office tidy or who isn't? Turns out you need a battery in this. Weird. Ah! Why is everything falling off? There we go. Uh. All right. This is going to be a pretty simple shot. As long as I get it in the right shot, in the shot. Why am I recording? No! I don't understand why it does that every now and again. Like... the hell's that all about? I love these types of videos but I also, they're probably like my least favourite because when things go wrong they just become so annoying to try and do. But I think it's just a case of like, how do you navigate through these problems? Bit of a challenge. Like what in the world is going on now? Why are you struggling? I think I need to leave. Feels like I need to leave a bit of time in between each one because the propellers get so hot. Not propellers, the motors. If that's the case, this would not be ideal. Ideal. So I just blow on them. That one's hot as heck.
I'm lightheaded now. I made a couple of other automations over the weekend as well. Um, it's quite nice just to be able to do them wherever I was. I actually just used ChatGPT to tell me exactly what to do. What did I do? I have one for, oh, I made a new one to display like the notes that I take for this. That's pretty sweet. Uh, move the last photo or video I took to a certain album. So if I know I just filmed a shot for a TikTok or for the vlog, then I would move that over. Then it would move that over automatically. Are you gonna take off? What's going on there? Bro, this is literally issue after issue, isn't it? Motor stuck. What are you stuck on? You're not stuck on anything, you muggo. All right, let's get this shot. Yes, okay, we got shot one, which is just to display that I'm using the remote. Oh good. oh, good, I'm glad we got shot one after we've been out here for 30 minutes, or however long. Um, so then, let's say I'll do that shot again, and I'll try catching it on the foot. Uh, okay, so let's do that, basically that same shot again, but this time I try and catch it on my foot. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get this in the right position. I am just going to start recording from now, because that is how cool I am. Oliver, how cool are you? That cool. Come on, boys. I'm just changing the camera position so that I can get all the shots I need or like be ready to get the shots I need. That was me calling the motors down. Oh no! <laughs> Dude, this ball is so light. I've also just realized that, can I even catch this ball on my foot? Like I've also just realized that every time I have to retry it, I have to stop the drone and start it again. I need my flipping Velcro boots. Did you see? <laughs> the wind was what moved that one. OK, 
Okay, we can do this. No, no, we can't do this. I swear I'm like, I'm not actually that bad. I could do this with a normal football pretty easily, I think. I've got no flipping chance with this. Getting dizzy from going up and down so much. <sighs> I, I'm getting hot, but I can't take my jacket off yet because I haven't even done it for the first time. And I think for for showing the part where I have to try and drop it like 20, 30 times from just some random feet, like 37 feet or something. I'm gonna have to just do it by hand and like pretend like the drone's in the air because I would be out here for flipping years. Come on. It's like it goes into this mode where it won't do anything but spin or like really slowly go up or down. Oh, it's going back and there we go. I go up from there, is that in the shot? Not really. What the fuck? I think we're alive. Motor's stuck, yeah, I'm not surprised when you flip in, decide to nosedive into shrub, you n twat.
Yes! Where's the remote? Oh! I thought I had that. Thought that was it. I thought I nailed it first try. Come on! No! It wouldn't go! Come on, get down here! No! Okay. Go up! No! Fuck you! It feels so weird. <laughs> I'm sweating. You can go, come on. All right. Yes! Go! 
Okay. We did it. All right, okay. Good, we got that shot. Now I need a shot of me plugging in. Like this is where I like to film chronologically. Um, next shot is not confident I could do it. That doesn't make any sense, is it? Because right now I have it that the ball drops from the drone and I catch it on my foot easily. And then I'm like, I'm not confident I can do it. So I bought the Anchor Solix. Maybe I put like, it takes me a couple of times to get it just from 10 feet. So then I plug in the Anchor Solix and the drone batteries. Yeah. Okay, so then I think I go, I'm going to use the battery without the um, writing on it. Like this one says how much the battery weighs. I don't know why it makes a difference to me to skip it out, but to like use one of the batteries without the um, markings doesn't make a difference really. So then like, if I get a shot of me, which I might just film on my phone. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. Whoopsie daisy. PlayStation controller up there. Let's get um, Fortnite playing. And then, so for this, I think I'm going to go as if I'm taking out the battery. Why the fuck are you so difficult to get out? Jinkies. Stop. And then where's the USB? Here. So then I've got the Solix which is like charging so maybe I need a shot like over my head of that. See how stupid that looks. I miss like 90% of myself in that one. Did I just do the same? I think I just did the same. The annoying thing is, is that like this shot of me showing all of that, I want to be able to show off all the things that I brought so that people would comment. And I don't think that shot really showed that off. How do I?
maybe that one. Okay, that'll do, donkey. Now that you've got a nice sweat going on, big boy. All right, notion, okay, so I've got the batteries. Fly the drone up to 30, 40 feet. Um, so, for this shot, uh, I kind of share that I feel I feel conflicted with this shot, like this section, because here I'm flying the drone up to 30 or 40 feet, and then the ball's going to drop and try and catch it. And I'm not going to fly it up to 30, 40 feet every time because like I'm going to be here for bloody ages. So I think what I'll do is I'll get the drone in the air. And because it's a blue sky, I can just like position the drone in like 10 to 20 different positions without actually dropping the ball. And then like I can mask between that and me at the bottom trying to catch the ball. I think. Like you here, I feel like you're just missing so much since I'm doing all of this for this camera. Right? Let me go to the side a little bit more. Okay. Show for dish bit. I think, yeah, I'm just going to get the drone in the air and put it in a load of different positions. And then, well, I guess. I only really need to record myself trying to catch the ball like five times. So maybe I just do that. Right, maybe. I think that's the right thing to do. If this is in the right position. I would like to get a shot of... I want a shot of the ball from this drone dropping. I kind of want to do as if there's a camera attached to the ball. I feel like that would be a cool shot. Let's, I think let's get the base shots first and get creative afterwards. I think that's the way we go. But I am going to have to film from my, I think from my phone here, of the ball being way up high because otherwise that camera's just going to have to be so far back. So let's focus, focus, focus on that. Whoopsie pooper. A bit windy. Jinkies, why was it coming down again?
I saw it coming down, panicked and dropped it. Oh, that's nice. Is it just too windy up there? I'm letting the propellers cool off, but what I think is... Oh, you weren't even recording, good. So I think I get the ball up in the air, take the shot of it being up high, get it up even higher, get another shot of that. And then I need two shots from the drone. One of the ball dropping from four, like 30, 40 feet, I'll choose a random number, and then another one of it dropping at 50 feet. And then I think the rest I can do from throwing the ball up. Which sucks, but... Does that count? That kind of counts as faking the video, doesn't it? Or is it... I don't know. Like, to me, I think that's different to faking a prank to make it look like it's real. Let's see how I feel. Keeps getting to like 35 feet and stopping. What can I do differently? I'm getting a screen recording of the drone up at the position it's at so that I can show what position I actually got to, where the ball is. I think it's, I don't know, I feel like it's always good to have extra stop recording. What the fuck is going on? Open and stay open. Jinkies. It is really windy now. Well, not really, but pretty windy.
formatting the SD card for this. Ready. Record screen. Don't care. Am I recording from here? Yeah, you've been recording for like 10 minutes, flipping it. No, like three, three and a half minutes, all right. Come on, 23 feet. Okay. Come on, drop it. Drop my ball. No. I feel like I have to give that some more goes. Come on, go! No! I think I have to be done with, I don't know, getting this off the drone. I know that's like the whole point of the video and the charging of the batteries, but I'm gonna be out here all bloody day. Let me have a look at my notes here. So, I've gotta get a shot of me catching it right before the battery runs out. So maybe if I say that here. Um, this is my last time before the battery runs out. And then, put it on charge, which is what I did. So actually, that was me switching batteries. So then I need a shot of me, which I kind of filmed that sink. I actually need a shot of me plugging this in, don't I?
if I turn this off oops okay that will do as a shot and then the next one is I want to get a shot of the camera dropping from the drone, so I'll rig that up. And then I want to get a shot of me lifting up the ball and be like, this is probably my last try on this battery. So I say battery's about to run out and then the ball drops and I catch it. This is my last time before the battery runs out, I think. Yes, that's what I say. Nice, nice stuff, Oliver. Okay. I'm going to switch the mic over to here for a moment so I can get the audio. I should not have interrupted that recording because I might have moved the camera. So if I go like way up in this, right, and just like, <laughs> oh! all right, let's try again. We can do this. We are going to make this happen. No! <laughs> like, I believe in myself that we're going to make this happen, but I also feel like this is terrible. <laughs> no! Watch me actually do this for like 50 times. Gosh. <laughs> This ball is so light. Goodness me. Oh, I've got to take off my jacket somewhere in here, haven't I? Oh, shit. That's what I should have done. So I've got to take jacket off before I get this. So I can't, I need to try it quite a few times, which I guess I've got. Let me use these as like attempts. Oh no! Jinkies, dude. It's, this is like playing and trying to control a slightly heavier balloon. <laughs> no! Hi. Right. So now, before I actually catch it, I need to get a shot with the drone on the... Fuck me, dude. I need to film that whole last section again. Don't I? Because I should take my shirt off and then I should say this is my last try. And then I catch it on my foot. I love making content. Sometimes this part really gets to me. So I need to switch the audio over again. Uh, I have an hour here. All of that section highlighted there. That's an hour of footage that I don't have any audio for. So 
That's really good. It was probably all just rubbish, but there's also the shot in there where I actually got it and made it happen. So, um, hopefully I don't need any of the audio for the actual TikTok. Like I've just looked through those files too, like all of these ones. These are all the files for the TikTok. And uh, none of those have audio, which is really great. So I'm just going to delete this hour so that you can enjoy your life. Yo, it, I, I think I left the field at like just after midday, I think 12.30. It's now 4.30. I spent the last four hours, once the video stopped. Um, I, I don't know what I did for most of that, but actually I, I know what I did for most of that. Most of that was spent trying to figure out the right rate for a partnership that just came in. It's um, It's been our biggest in a long time, but it was still a bit lower than, than what it should be. Like, so basically information. Anyway, I just, I just spent the last few hours like learning a hell of a lot from one of my friends that gets far more deals and is far better at the negotiating them on his own and with his team. So, and then working with my manager to, to be on the same page. So I think we got that to a good spot, but it also meant, like I, I wrote the script for the, the drop in the ball video, but I didn't get it edited. So that's our goal for tomorrow. Get this completely edited. I really want to have that done in the morning. And then I want to get working on I want the mini Skittles video maybe scripted. And I reckon we could shoot that. That's a quick video to shoot. I don't know if we'll have time, but it would be nice to get the hand in lotion video prepared. Like at least, you know, so that I can stick my canned in and canned in my hand in and run it for the next 24 hours. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, feeling good about this deal. This would this would take a lot of pressure off. I think okay, it's freezing in here. So let me put my. I think one of the big things. That um, it's crazy that a brand deal. Hold on. Temperatures just dropped like crazy. What have I done? You can tell I'm in good mind. Um, the one brand deal can set you for a month, if not more, like possibly even more than a month. And it's, um, yeah, it's wild. It's absolutely mental, I, I think. Being just the average Joe that I think I am. Where am I going with this? I'm going with the fact that like I'm just a guy who makes videos and enjoys making videos and spends a lot of time making videos. And it's now at a place where like a brand, someone at a brand is willing to pay X amount of money to have me do a piece of work for them that I get almost completely free reign over and that I really enjoy doing. It's crazy to me. It, it still is crazy. I feel bad at the, like at the end of the video when time's really gotten away from me that I haven't done what I said I would for the video. But I think that's also part of, like, that's something that I have to accept and work around as the person who is doing all of this, right? Um, like, I'm, I'm constantly changing my priorities. Like, I think I probably spent two, three hours 
learning and trying to figure out what to say in reply to this partnership opportunity. Like, yeah, I know a hell of a lot more now than I did, you know, two, three hours ago, but it still means I spent two or three hours not working on the thing I was meant to be working on. But what's, what I think is very interesting is that if this deal comes through, it means that I'm not making this video or one of these videos on a like quick turnaround so that I can get the money from the views. All right, like I'm, I'm, I end up then making these because I really, really enjoy them. All right. Well, hopefully the emails keep going this evening and something gets figured out because it's meant to be a very quick turnaround on this one. So we'll see. My fingers are crossed. Milady.